Uh. Okay, we are now recording. So we do have a couple of people who are still uh, not present, but I know that uh, one, of, one of them tried to watch the meeting yesterday and was, disapp was disappointed. Uh, so I, I invited her to come back today when we were actually having this. And I'm sorry, I did just mute you all. So uh, if you want to say something, you'll just have to click the, the mute or unmute button in the lower left-hand corner. But I know that, uh, that- Does it work if I do it? Well, yes, you just, you just unmuted yourself. So and now you're muted again. All right, and yeah, and, and if, you're, if you're wondering if you are muted or not, you can always see in the lower left-hand corner, I think of your screen, if you are muted, there's the red microphone with a line through it. And if you don't see anything there, you're probably not muted. Uh, so we will, we'll just kind of start out now. And I think what we'll do, I am able to unmute you one at a time. I've got a list of you here. So I will, I will do that. We'll just do some introductions and uh, let us know what, how about just one thing, what you've been up to since the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic hit and you've been much more restricted in what you've uh, been able to do. So, uh, Drew, why don't you start out I'm trying to unmute you here. For some reason it's not letting me, so why don't you unmute yourself? There, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, um, now I have a question. If I'm gonna sneeze or something, is it okay if I go like this? And then the video stops, but can you still hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. So I just, I, where it says start video, then I click on there again, right? I move the cursor. Yep. And then start video, okay. Yep, those are toggles. So it's either toggles. on or off. Um, well, my name is Drew Campbell, um, longtime resident of Mankato. And some of you know that I served for about nine years up until just over a year ago as a Blue Earth County Commissioner. Prior to that, let's see, I worked for 28 years at Security Hospital in St. Peter. And during this pandemic, which for us probably started, you know, the third week of March, really, um, I think I'm just, I've learned how thankful I am that we have, our yard is very small, but we have a yard. And so it's got dirt and grass and garden space. And I'm so thankful that we have that to play in. Plant food and flowers. And uh, I thought about people who might not have their own little, little plot of land. And what a difference it makes if you have some place outside to go where you feel kind of safe. Yeah. So that's one thing for me. I've really found going out for an hour or even two in the garden. We have small gardens, they're not very big. Um, it makes a real difference emotionally and mentally in my life. Okay, and and you've got Dawn as well, so that helps, I'm sure. Well, that see, that helps that helps us so we can stay together. Yeah, you know, having <laughs> having the getaway time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Drew. I'm gonna see. Uh, I did just. I was able to mute you again, so that's good. Uh, and let's see. Is this Barb? Are you there? If you are, if you want to unmute yourself and introduce yourself. There you go. Barb Pick. And uh, I don't know why I can't get my video, but I'll, I, and I don't, everybody talks about the bottom left part of the screen. There's nothing there for me to tap onto. So I don't know why that is. Um, up at the top, it says safe driving mode. So, Interesting. Oh, hmm. you're not you're not driving, are you, Barb? <laughs> sitting at the dining room table. Okay, good. Uh, I am a native of Mankato, but I have just moved back to two years ago from Park Rapids, where I lived for 30 years. And uh, during this um, pandemic, I have had a lot of things to do at home, and I'm I think I'm about two years into ahead in getting things done here at the house since I moved back. So that's one positive thing. All right. I enjoy as I take Zumba classes twice a week from Vine on, uh, on my laptop or my desktop computer because it has a camera or just, let me start again. 
My desktop computer does not have a camera, but I'm able to take classes on it and, and get the audio and, and uh, can see Katie instructing. And then at the end of the class, I shut that, I leave the meeting there and I enter the meeting again on my, so that I can talk with others that have been in the class and see, they can see me. Um, well, so. I was, I was saying when we were talking before, it sounds like you're more tech savvy than a lot of us are because you've had that back and forth between two devices. Well, in a way I am, but I don't know why I can't get my video going now. Um, you know, I'd, I've never, I guess I've never done this just on the iPhone. I've okay. switched others. So like I say, I don't have anything down in the bottom of the left corner, but I do on my desktop computer. Okay. Tap on your screen because I'm on my iPhone too. Just touch your screen. And then the camera icon may show up? Yeah, it'll come up. Okay, I've, nothing's happening. I have these little dots right in the middle down on the bottom. No, just, you can just touch in the middle of your screen even and it'll come up. It should just come right up out of the bottom. I don't see it. Um, Hmm. Hmm. Okay, well, well, we'll tell you what, Barb, I've got an iPhone as well. I've never accessed Zoom through it, but I will see what I can do uh, later and get back to you, see if I can find out something for you. And I also have to say, I have to leave at half an hour after class starts. I have an appointment at three. Yep, that's fine. We'll, we'll, you just escape, you just leave the meeting and it'll all be good. Thank you. All right, thanks, Barb. All right, well, let's go on to Irene. Irene, how are you doing? I'm trying to unmute you here. You better have to do it yourself. There you are. Yes, I'm doing well, thank you. Um, and I also am a native of Mankato. However, I moved to Minneapolis for about five years and then I moved up to the Canadian border, International Falls, for about 10 years, and then um, came back to Mankato and have been here ever since. I worked for many years, almost 20 years, for Midwest Wireless. That is no longer here. Mm -hmm. And I guess what I have done, I've really appreciated having the Vine exercises online because I've been able to follow them and it was just nice to see those friendly faces again and also I took up uh, watercolors painting and um, you know just kind of getting things done around the house yeah we've all had time for that haven't we <laughs> all um, right we definitely all right. Well, thank you, Irene. Uh, let, let's head on to uh, Jeannie. Jeannie or Phil, if you want to unmute yourselves in the, the lower left-hand corner, you should see the, if you hold the cursor over the screen, you should see a microphone probably right now is red with a line through it. As I'm trying to, for some reason, I can't unmute you folks. How are you doing, Grubners? Are you still there, Grubners? All right, well, let's, let's try Linda. Linda Good, are you there? I am here. Okay, wonderful. Um, let's see, I moved to the Mankato area in 1972, and then we moved out to the lake in 1989. So I am on Lake Jefferson. Um, uh, during the pandemic, uh, I'm fortunate to live in a neighborhood where we can walk pretty freely because there aren't many residents here. And so I don't have to wear a mask most of the time when I'm in my neighborhood. Um, I do, uh, and of course I have the lake now that I can begin to swim in and kayak and all that stuff. So I have plenty to keep me busy. Plus I've sewn over 400 masks so far. Um, I'm busy with the Vine Memoir Writing Group. We've been meeting on Zoom, I don't know how long now, a long time. <laughs> 
And now we've just started social distancing meetings, um, meeting at Spring Lake Park, bringing our chairs, sitting six feet apart and having our meetings out there. So um, uh, there's lots of things I miss uh, yeah. that as all of us do. I miss just coming to Vine. I just started water aerobics. I wanted to do oh. that. Now I can't. <laughs> I could do it in my lake by myself. But <laughs> There you go. All right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Uh, I see that the, the Grebners have joined us, so. Uh... We lost you for a minute, Mike, sorry. Okay, that's um, all right. We've been doing a lot of gardening, or I have been, and I'll let Phil talk for himself. Oh yeah, I've been a gardener since uh, I was nine years old. So I mean, wow. we, we've got a uh, acre and a half lot, and we do a lot of tomatoes and all the kinds of stuff that people plant in their vegetable gardens, you know. Okay. Have you, how have you been communicating with folks? Mostly by phone or? Oh yeah, phone, uh, email. We, we, where we live, we don't really uh, come into contact with many people being outside of town, but we do have to go shopping. So we'll, we'll go to the grocery store or Menards, Menards. You know, that kind of things. So. Oh, sure. Okay, well, thank you for joining us today. We've got a couple more people. We'll just move along. Uh, Mary Mertesdorf. Okay, yes. Um, well, I live uh, out between Good Thunder and Garden City, um, out in the country. I've lived here for about 40 years. And um, uh, let's see, during this, pandemic. Um, I have kept up with Vine with the exercises online, which has been um, very good. I've done different exercises than I was used to doing and uh, have uh, really enjoyed that. And then this week, I went to um, move it in more with Jen outside at Vine and then today was the first time in the building because they weren't sure about the weather and so uh, um, I picked up a Caring Connection friend and went to um, the fifth floor and did chair aerobics oh, and so that was very nice to be there and um, uh, as to other activities I have done a fair amount of zoom zooming on here my son I thought he was going to arrange a family Zoom meeting and all of a sudden I realized he was setting me up as the host and so <laughs> I became a Zoom host <laughs> and um, um, I, I ordinarily before this uh, there was a group that I would get together with from about seven to eight in the morning down in Garden City for coffee. Well, since we're all over 60, um, we decided after we tried texting for a week or so, and it was kind of a struggle, we decided to Zoom. So now we Zoom every morning from seven to eight and have our coffee. Wow. And that's, uh, that's very enjoyable. Um, I just got off um, a Zoom just uh, about a half an hour ago where um, I had a nephew that graduated from ninth grade out in Boston and they did it on Zoom. They had each one of the kids give a speech and it was on oh. Zoom. So I have had a little bit of experience with it, but I've also had struggles with it, so. Okay, <clears throat> well, I, I, we appreciate your being here and I may just uh, call on you as a, as a host to, uh, to help out because this is my first time. And now Mary, you also joined us, didn't you, on some of the um, CILC? I did, I did. I, and I really enjoyed some of those. Actually, one of them, um, my son and his boys showed up and um, he started asking me questions. So I left the youngest grandson learning about Washington, DC. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, 
I said, okay, you watch, you watch and see about all of the memorials that Washington DC is. Okay. And so, but I've, I have seen several of them that, um, and I, they're very interesting. I've really enjoyed them. I think they're very well done. Of course, that's what, that's what these folks do. But uh, for those of you who don't know, you know, CILC in North Mankato contracts with who they call content providers. They're usually museums and other uh, places that do tours and have historical information, that sort of thing. So many of these people were presenting from their basements, uh, which was interesting, but very well done and, uh, mm -hmm. and a nice way to stay engaged. And it also gave Vine kind of the incentive, you know, if we do Zoom meetings, we don't only have to use local people. We can also reach out to people who are beyond uh, a drive away to, to do this. So who knows, maybe you'll see some of those as we, as we go along here. So I uh, want to welcome Bob Kreutzer, who joined us just recently. Hi, Bob. Oh, he's got a, um, just a minute, I've got a mute. Yeah, Bob will need to unmute himself, but that's okay. We'll go along to Susan. Susan, you want to introduce yourself? Susan Hines. Uh, hi, I've lived in Mankato since uh, 1968, and um, I love Vine. I love going to exercise there. I haven't been back there in a while. I've been watching some of the Vine um, exercise uh, videos and going, following along. Um, I hook up with my MacBook, and then I have a connection to my smart TV, and then I still have a big screen. My cat's here, Drew. Drew, here's my cat. I, I cat sit for uh, Drew and Dawn a while back. Oh. I want Frankie, look up. She's just showing yes, She really helped us out. It was great. Anyway, there's Frankie. Um, so I'm, you talked about having a garden uh, spot, and I have uh, started a little rooftop garden. Normally in the summer, I do a lot of historical reenactment, but everything's closed down. I'm retired, and so I do things around the southern half of the state, but all that stuff's closed down for this year, so I can stay home and water these rooftop uh, plants, and I enjoy being out there. It is really nice therapy. I've done a few videos uh, where Heather Heron from um, the Blue Earth County Historical Society goes and we do one minute or two minute videos at uh, the Hubbard House and we talk about, so we can kind of keep in touch and I'll go there in costume. And so that's kind of kept me a little bit busy. And so it's nice to have that and walking, uh, being outside is really nice during this time. So yeah. Okay. We're adapting, all of us, I think. Thank you Thank for joining you. us, Susan. And I see that Bob has got uh, his audio muted now. So want to introduce yourself, Bob? Yeah, Mike, can you hear me? I can indeed. Hey, good. Uh, I'm Bob Kreitzer. Live here back on Echo Street up by the hospital. And I had a little trouble getting uh, things going here. The, uh, I had lost, uh, I had to send the, uh, um, the email from my cell phone over to the uh, laptop here <laughs> to get it back. I don't know what what caused me to lose the email, but on the on the laptop. But anyway, everything going fine now, I think, Mike. So why don't you go ahead with the meeting and? Okay, the, I think we've gotten every, everybody introduce yourselves. I believe uh, I'm going to go back to muting everyone. Although it looks like everybody is muted except Bob. Uh, there we go, Bob. I got you now. I've been able to mute people, but I can't unmute them. I don't know why that is. Uh, I think you're missing me. Yeah, Margaret, I know you've got two things, two things open now, so you want to make sure you mute. I just muted you again, so otherwise there'll be some bounce back, and I, we can't hear you because I just muted you, I think. Margaret didn't get to introduce herself. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead, Margaret, have you unmuted? because I can't unmute you. I have to unmute, okay. On the bottom of the iPhone. Oh, let's see. Okay, try it, try it now, Margaret. No, I, I've got a thing where I have to unmute. Yep, we, we can hear I'll you. An echo. Yep. Um, yeah. On the bottom of the iPhone, there's a place for, if you, if you click on there, you'll get a row where it says mute, stop video, share content, participants, and more. If you go to where it said, where mine says stop video, I think you can start video. Yeah, uh, uh, who are you talking to on this one? I'm, I'm talking, talking to iPhone, whoever, whoever iPhone is. I think her name is Barb. Yeah. 
Yeah, go ahead. We'll just keep moving. She's been trying that. We haven't. If you Did want to just get a of, of words if, like that. Yeah, if you want to just introduce yourself, Margaret. I think she found it. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. she's muted now. So we. Oh, yeah. Please let's let's move ahead though. She'll work on that, and we'll get back to her. Okay. Um, I've used uh, Zoom a few times. Uh, the memoir group, which Linda is also a member of, uses Zoom, and we've had pretty good success with it, um, video, or video talking to each other. And then our church has a Bible class that we use Zoom on, and that's worked out pretty well. So I've had a little bit of experience using it. The Historical Society does some Zoom presentations on Thursday afternoons, and those have been very good. And uh, we've had a lot of fun visiting before and after those presentations. So okay. that's about all I have to say. I'm uh, enjoying using Zoom. All right. Well, sounds good. It's, it's nice to, to have folks who are not scared of the technology, although I know sometimes it's, uh, it's easier to do that. Uh, but I want to just take this opportunity to, to start going through some things. This probably isn't going to be a, a, a long, long session, but I wanted to touch on some of the uh, some of the features that you might utilize if you're doing a Zoom presentation through Vine, because we will start offering those on Friday. Actually, we've got uh, Bruce McGurdy, who is the general manager of Pro Radio. That's KTOE and all those stations out toward Eagle Lake. He will be presenting at two o'clock. So if you'd like to uh, register online, the best thing, if you can register online earlier rather than later, because as of right now, what I've been doing is having to check the sign in uh, throughout the week. And then I've been sending invitations as people register. And then we'll try to get a final reminder out the day before. That's something we learned from the CILC group. They send out multiple uh, invitations, which works out really well for uh, reminders for myself and for everybody else involved. So we've kind of walked through some of these uh, uh, features as we've been going along. Barb, it's nice to, to have seen you. Uh, I know we were having some trouble with the with the camera, but it seems like everything is okay now. Are we still... Well, maybe Barb's not even with us anymore. Well, there she is. Hi. Uh, but the one thing I was going to start with is I, I'm in kind of a, a shady spot right here because I don't have a light immediately in front of me. The best place if you want to be in a position where people can see you real well is to find a spot where you've got light in front of you. So while the, the natural tendency might be to put a window to your back, it's actually uh, better probably for Zoom meetings where you are going to be seen if you can have the light in front of you. Uh, that way it'll light up your face and you won't be kind of silhouetted if you've got bright light behind you, it will turn you into the, the shadow in front of the bright light because the camera will adjust according to the main light that's in the room. So that's just something you might want to uh, think about. Uh, if you have not done so already as well, if you uh, go to, if, if you are viewing this in, what I've, what I've used is the speaker, uh, speaker form, speaker view is what it's called. And what that does is then the, uh, the program will hear who is speaking and that person will become the largest face on your screen. You can use the gallery view, which is kind of the Brady Bunch view where everybody is on the screen at one time. That can work out well, unless you get to a setting where you've got more people in your meeting than you have room on your screen, in which case some people you'll have to hit a, an arrow button either left or right to be able to see everybody. For example, right now in speaker view, for some reason it's, it's, it's stuck on Margaret, maybe because you were the last one to speak. And then across the top, I've got everybody uh, in the small windows and I need to use the side arrows to go back and forth to see everybody who's here. So for example, right now it's me, Susan Hines, Margaret, Linda and Bob, who I see. And then Margaret is also down below. So she must be really special. Uh, but if you'd like to know, and next to that view, which is just to the right of those photos across the top, you'll see where you can make sure you go to full screen. That way it'll utilize the entire space on your screen 
for example, I'm using my laptop now, which has got what a 13 or 15 inch screen. But when I'm at home, I've got my 27 inch monitor. So that makes a, a big difference. But that's just something that, uh, that you can experiment with. Feel free to do that as I'm talking uh, because there are lots of features here that maybe you've never seen before and you can safely uh, experiment with them while we're talking. That's kind of one of the reasons I wanted to, to have this session today was so that people could get into the program and do a little playing around with it. As I've mentioned, uh, it is pretty important if you can to, to mute yourself when you're not talking. A lot of times there are things happening around you that you don't have control over. I've been involved with a lot of meetings where people will be listening to something in a program. They'll have their mic microphone open. Uh, it's not muted and their spouse will come in and they'll be having a conversation while somebody's doing an invocation or some other kind of reading, which can be uh, distracting for everybody. That's, I think, probably why the host has that ability to mute everybody else if that happens. We even had somebody share their screen, which I don't think they even knew uh, how to do that, but it was something that just came up. Uh, but one thing, one thing that's kind of fun is there are, we can create polls or surveys of people. So that's one of those fun things that you can uh, utilize. One of the things I've always seen for uh, meeting presentations is don't have one person speaking the whole time do interaction if you can. So right now I'm just going to launch a poll. Hopefully, uh, can you guys see the, uh, the poll? I've, I've unmuted you all. So Susan, can you see the, the poll on your screen? Yes. All right. Uh, and then if yes, you sir. want, yep, if you want to, uh, have you ever participated in a Zoom meeting before? Uh, you, you've got the different options. Of course, yes for work and family or friends and, and you've hosted before. So I can see people are starting to respond. So I can see the results here. And then what we can do is uh, it's supposed to be able to share this. I'm not sure it says end a poll. Uh, well, right now what we've got is, looks like we've got four, seven people who have responded. Uh, right now we've got uh, one person who's done it for work. We've got uh, three people who said yes with family or friends. We've got three people who said yes, and I have hosted meetings before. I think we know from our descriptions who those might be. Uh, looks like nobody is completely new to this, or at least nobody who's voted yet. So if you click on something, then do the hit the submit button if you've, if you've not done that yet. Otherwise, we probably just have some people. Oh, now we've got seven people. So five, five of you have hosted meetings before. So uh, that's pretty impressive. Uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to end. Uh, Mike? Yes, ma'am. Where, where did you have that poll? Where does that come out of? I missed that. Uh, it should be on your screen right now, I hope. Uh, no, I, I mean, how did you initiate it? Oh, uh, actually, if you go down, uh, you need to uh, enable polling in the meeting description, I believe, Linda. So you would need to go to the, uh, when it's set up in your meeting, then you create the polls there and then they become available. Actually, what happens is on the that bottom uh, command bar, it, it appears, polling appears right next to share screen once you've enabled it for the meeting. Uh, oh, is that just for the host? Is that just for the host yes. poll, right, Mike? Yeah, yep. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we don't want you getting in there. Okay. No, I know. So I couldn't create a poll right now. Only the host can do it. Right. But that, you know, that's just kind of one of those fun things that you can do if you're having a, um, a even with a business meeting. I know John Kind is our president for Kiwanis, and he usually begins the meeting with, sometimes it's fun ones and sometimes it's serious ones. For example, we talked uh, today about, oh, here now I can, I can share the results. Uh, so you can see how you folks have uh, reported out on this one. But yeah, John uses that. We're going to start doing that uh, to find out if people want to start meeting in person or if they want to uh, continue to meet via Zoom because Kiwanians are social people and we kind of like to, to interact if we can. But interestingly, at, a, at our meeting this Monday, John asked people if they were ready to go out to restaurants or to church. And in both cases, about 60% of the people said no. So I'm guessing it's gonna be some time before we have an in-person Zoom or in-person Kiwanis meeting. 
Uh, Mike? Yes, ma'am. Uh, for clarification, you control the poll questions before the meeting, correct? Yes, you create the polls before yeah. the meeting. And then how do you activate it? Is, does a different button appear on your screen, did you say? Yeah, once you've enabled polling, when you've created the, the meeting, it, it will appear underneath right next, just to the right of the share screen button on the bottom. So uh, okay. if you see that down there. So otherwise I did not see that before I enabled that function. Yeah. So there, there are probably other things that I don't know about, but that's something that John had uh, John Kind had done, so I I learned about that and just kind of poked around a little bit until I had the uh, till I found it. All right, uh, and let's see. I just I just talked about speaker mode or gallery mode. I guess uh, one thing you'll find a lot of times. I don't know how many of you have activated the chat feature. Mm -hmm. If you if you have your cursor over the the window, you'll have those options come across that you know where you're mute and the uh, video buttons are. You can also go to the chat function. A lot of places, including all of those uh, presentations that were done for us uh, from CILC, use the chat feature to communicate, to ask questions. That way we don't have to have somebody uh, interrupt vocally. And in those cases, oh, hi Drew. Uh, in those cases, they have what's called a moderator who watches those questions so the presenter can concentrate on what they're presenting. So that adds that extra layer of, um, of organization, I guess, to a meeting. So uh, there's also, I'm not sure why they have both the chat and I don't see the Q&A. Usually there's a Q&A underneath there. Uh, two different kind of variations on the same theme, I guess. So most every meeting I've been to, people say, use the chat function and not the Q&A. The nice thing about the chat function is that you can also, if you go over to uh, the window, there is a drop down menu where everybody who's in the meeting shows up. And if you want to send a private message, you can just drop down that menu, uh, click on the person you'd like to send a message to, and then you can do that without having to share it with everybody else. And one of the other nice features, if you were using this for something where you've got lots of discussion going on or you're making plans like for a family or something, you can save, uh, right now, like I say, I'm recording the video, but at the same time when the meeting is over and I get the option of viewing that video again, there's also a feature where you can download just the chat feature. So you will have, in essence, you know, a transcript of the chat that took place during the meeting. So that's great if you're doing things like uh, at Kiwanis, we ask for volunteers. We do that through the chat feature. So people can just put in their name for a certain day that they're going to do something with the meeting. And then we're able to save that uh, without any problems after the meeting happens. So uh, our meeting on Monday, we heard from Natasha Lopez uh, at the YWCA and we're going to then share that video so that the members who are not available to make the meeting on Monday can still see it. And that's the function that I will use too for, uh, for Vine. So anybody who wants to see this presentation after the fact will be able to find it on our YouTube channel. So you've got hey, that- Mike, uh, I was gonna mention, ask something. Mm -hmm. um, a couple hours ago, I'm involved with several other boards in town and I'm, I was, I'm on a committee and I have had to set up a Zoom meeting. Okay. And I've never done that before either. I mean, uh, it's gonna be tomorrow. And um, I have a little icon that I downloaded onto my screen, you know, from Zoom. Mm -hmm. And um, it was the, so- the, the application you mean? It must be the Zoom application. Yeah. I mean, you, you say application, but it's just a little app. Yeah, a little icon. Yep, that you double click and open the program. Yeah, open the program. I did that and it took me about, no kidding. I mean, it didn't have there's no complexities. I just want to have a, a simple Zoom meeting with five or six people. And it uh, literally only took, I mean, I'm telling you, there's only about three things I had to answer. It just took two seconds. Yeah. I mean, I bet you after 60 seconds, I had it all set up. I had the Zoom code, but 
if the meeting is, if you're trying to set it up for longer than 30 minutes, then you have to, you have to become a member or pay money because okay. it only, it only gives you 40 minutes maximum. But we belong, um, we found that with our coffee Zoom, which goes for an hour, it only costs you $16 with the tax to um, uh, Zoom to be a member. And it's a monthly thing. You can cancel it at the end of a month. Is the $16 for the year or for the month? Sixteen one six. Yes, it, per, it's fifteen dollars plus tax per month, and that's per, per month. Per month. But okay. we felt it was it. We felt it was worth it. We've got about nine people that come on and and Zoom with us and for coffee every day. And, oh wow! Uh, well, Monday through Saturday. Okay. And, um, we felt it was worth it. And um, Drew, what we found, uh, I was, uh, I have a Saturday morning group that does that too. What we yeah. found is generally, uh, a lot of times Zoom will come on and extend the amount of time you've got. Of course, it doesn't happen every time. So if you really want to make sure that you're able to go past that 40 minutes, uh, that membership is probably the, the best way to go. Okay. And you should know that only the host needs to pay that. Right. Fee. Yeah, not each person. Just, to, just if you're going to be a host for more than one meeting. Okay. So, so Drew, if you've got uh, five people in that, you could split that uh, five different ways if you wanted to extend that longer. So, you know, come down to three bucks a month for per yeah. person. Yeah. Well, I think we're going to have three meetings in three three weeks, then we're going to be done. So I don't know if I want to, you know, I guess I could do it if I was going to meet with my kids or something. You know, I could start a host meeting with them. Mm -hmm. yeah. What I um what I ran into with it was it was after we had about three or four times together, then all of a sudden they started cutting us off right at four forty minutes. Okay. So up okay. until that time, they usually extended another. They'd say, "Oh, we're going to give you another twenty minutes free," okay. and then all of a sudden, after about the third or fourth meeting, we were cut off at 40 minutes right that's, i mean right mid mid word <laughs> that's what you call marketing off. marketing you yeah. give it to them free for a few times and let them get hooked we had yep. a similar experience with our uh, zoom group for our memoir group okay all right well uh great discussion i'm glad we're, we're having all of this because uh anybody who's watching will probably have those same kind of questions uh, um hi. i have another yeah. question related to the chat function Okay. Um, one of our members, and I don't know how she does it, I think she's on the computer for the Zoom meeting, but she always has her iPhone in her hand. Hmm. And the other day we were talking about uh, the Iowa State Fair when Ann Rand was performing, and as children, the children had to wait outside while the, their parents went in to see Ann Rand, the fan dancer. Okay. So, um, of course, this person immediately went to her iPhone and found a picture of I of uh, Ann Rand and the Iowa State Fair and sent it to us somehow through the chat function. But I don't I don't know if she just typed in the um, web address or if she was able to transfer from her iPhone to well Zoom. actually as as I'm looking at the chat window right now, if you've got that open, you see the the area at the bottom for typing your message and immediately to the right of that is the is the icon for file. I think uh -huh. you're able to I think you're able to I just clicked on that and it says Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive. So I think you're able to upload uh -huh. okay. directly to the chat from there. Okay. And of course, that's that's a good segue into uh, if anybody has something on their computer screen that they want to share. What's nice, one of the well, what Drew mentioned about how easy it is. That's why Zoom has been doing so well uh, during this pandemic because people have been exposed to the program and found out how easy it is, and they are then utilizing it in so many different ways. But one of the key features that they talk about is file sharing. And it's set up so that anybody within the group can share a computer screen. So I've been in a conversation where something about, you know, maybe Secretary of State uh, mail-in balloting has come up. They have uh, gone to the web, 
found information and then been able to share that on everybody's screen by going through the, the share, file, share uh, screen. So what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna click on that. I have a PowerPoint from one of our, huh, I, I opened it up, but I don't see it right now. So uh, <laughs> yeah, isn't that the way it always goes? Uh, but here, oh, let's see this. Yeah, of course, everything's a little bit different every time you do it, but uh, let me see if I can still open that up. Well, there it is. And you should be able to go down there. So what's nice is it goes on and then your options pop up on your screen and then you just have to double click. But I'm sharing something, but I think it's probably just uh, not what I'm looking for. <laughs> so I will try to stop sharing that. Uh, but what I've done in the past, when I'm not with anybody, and of course it works, is if you have something else open on your desktop, this time it's a, it's a PowerPoint, you can uh, hit the share screen button and then a window will pop up that has the different things that you're able to open. You can just double click that file that you wanna open and it'll open up and share onto everybody's screen. So when we do things like our Computer University, which we will have coming up this coming Monday. We're gonna be talking about how to stay in touch with people using your computer. How timely is that? Uh, but it's interesting because we'll be using Zoom to do that. So what happens is the guys from computer, uh, Mankato Computer Technology will have the entire PowerPoint. They'll share it onto the screen so people can watch it as they go along. But then they will also record it make that file available to us to post on our website. And then they also have a PDF of that PowerPoint on their homepage. So you can go back, view it, and open up the, the PDF as you're following it through. So there are great functions with this uh, program. And when they work, they're fantastic. Uh, did you have a question, Linda? Um can only the host share the screen or can any of the participants? It should be something that everybody can do because uh, I've had that happen with uh, all sorts of different people on different meetings. And that may again be something that you can set up when you're creating the meeting because there are several things. For example, I set this meeting up to start recording immediately. Uh, but then when Susan and Margaret and others were chatting, I put a pause on that until the actual meeting started. Then I, then I started recording again. Uh, but so many of those things can be set up by sure. the host creating the meeting. I have a comment and a question. When I click on the screen share down below, it gives me a, a, a message that says host disabled attendee screen sharing. Right, so in this yeah. case, in this case, I probably did that when I was setting up the meeting, not knowing uh, that I had the option to do it. I have another question. I know uh, in a Zoom meeting I went to, um, you could change the background behind you. Yeah, yep, that's next on my, my list. If you, want, if you want to go through, we can go through that right now, actually. Uh, can I just make a comment, Mike? Mm -hmm. When I was first using Zoom, probably the very first time, I was just playing with all the buttons, you know? <laughs> And all of a sudden, my friends who were in Texas said, why are we seeing your computer screen with all your files? Oh. And it was because I had clicked on the share screen. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you can make accidents like that happen, too. <laughs> yeah, but we actually had that happen at one of our Kiwanis meetings. I would mention who did it, but you all, pro all probably know him, so I won't, I won't embarrass <laughs> him by doing that. But my guess is he didn't know he had done that, and thankfully... Uh, the, the host of the meeting was able to clear uh, the, the screen sharing. But in question to Susan, you had mentioned something that's it's called a virtual background, I think is what you were talking about, where instead of having, you know, being able to see Linda's back window and all her file cabinets and, and bookcases and that sort of thing, you can uh, instead either use uh, one of a few uh, standard ones that they've got, or you can upload your own photo. If you go to uh, right next to the mute button where it says stop video 
and there's a, a what I call an up arrow or a carrot right next to that. Just click, click and hold that, or just click it, and what you'll see it says select a camera, and then it says choose virtual background. So if you go up to choose virtual background and click on that one, what you'll have come up is a window where you can choose a virtual background. Uh, so for right now, I should be, well, the Statue of Liberty or the uh, Golden Gate Bridge didn't show up for me. Mine has the Golden Gate Bridge on it. Yeah. Well, so uh, yeah. you can do that. And what's also fun. Where do you, you click? Where do you click, Mike? I just am not sure. Uh, you go down to where it says stop video. Stop video. Bottom. That right arrow just to the right of it. Click oh. on that and a menu will show up that says choose virtual background. Oh, sure. And what's nice when you go to that next window, if you see for uh, the row of virtual backgrounds you can choose from, and then above the far right one is a plus. If you were to click on that, you would be able to upload one of your own photos to use as your background. So if you click on that, it'll come up with one of those windows again that uh, that you've seen in so many other places, including Facebook, if you're wanting to uh, post a photo. And then you can go to and find where there's a photo that you would like to have uh, as your background. Uh, but my computer, unfortunately, does not doesn't says I can't doesn't meet those restrictions, so I can't post it for you. So why does Margaret still? She's got a virtual background, but it still shows her files behind it <laughs> or you know it's kind of in there why is that because i've had that happen before i have no idea <laughs> hmm. margaret is special i guess so <laughs> well it, it could very well be that she is uh well no i'm, I'm not sure why i that have is. A, i have a bookcase back there that looks oh important, yeah i guess well, yeah, and so you can still say what happens is that, okay, I, I understand the question now. Uh, th that virtual background depends on the color that is behind you. It's like a green screen in the movies. So if you've got a color that uh, blends in with the color that you've chosen, it'll show through the real stuff behind you and not the image that's in the virtual background. Okay. That, that happens a lot too if you've got a really bright light behind you. What happens usually is that the virtual background doesn't, isn't substantial and doesn't hold uh, because of that bright light. It just kind of washes it out. So in this case, that's actually Margaret's bookcase that shows there to, the, to, to our right side of her face. For some reason, the background is just not covering over that. Okay. Does it with the same picture or a different picture? Yeah. <laughs> so it might. That, that also could be because of the light if, that's shining on it, too. If it says a there, sound video background is required, green color is preferred. Can you see my so virtual background, too, or not? Most yeah, of it, there's, out of space. Yeah. there's a picture <laughs> that shows through. There is yeah. a picture that shows through yeah. behind your head. Can, can you see the, the, the space shot behind me, too, though? Yeah. Yeah. Just a bit. Yeah. And that's oh, okay. the same one I've got. All right. If um, one thing, if 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 they're on an iPhone, which is what I am, they have to touch in the middle, and it's in down in the corner. It says more, and there's like three dots, and you got to push on that where it says more, and then it comes up and says virtual background or chat or that type of thing. Right, it's different for phones as opposed to computers. Mm -hmm. so, the, so the main thing is just to get the, have that uh, menu kind of show up underneath on your screen and then click what you need to to get to the uh, camera icon. Okay. Or the video icon is where it comes up. So that's something that's kind of fun. I. Uh, at our breakfast club meeting, uh, the guy who originated our breakfast club was Rick McClune. Some of you may know him. I had a picture of Rick uh, from the Cafe Camarda when he owned that downtown that I just posted behind me. So there was this picture of Rick right next to me. 
at the uh, at the breakfast table, so to speak. So it was kind of fun to to bring him into one of the meetings. He passed away in 2008, I believe. So uh, 12 years absent, we've got him back in there. Uh, <laughs> Now, now, Mike, do you know how to make it so I can share a screen or not? I would have to go back to the setup of the meeting. Oh, you do? Yeah. You can't just click something now and let me share my screen. I uh, know. Let's see. I don't know if you can do that now. The, the option I had didn't say, it says multiple tar participants can share simultaneously. But oh. Can you see that? Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's uh that's the Optimist Creed. I'm I'm we have a small little club called the Optimist Club here in Mankato. And yeah. um I just wanted to see if I could do it. That's all. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, a, it's a little thing we say before each meeting. Oh. So it's about po being positive. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and of course, the one one difficult thing about uh, having multiple people speaking at the same time in a Zoom meeting is that uh, they will cut each other out at times. There is a slight delay. We've tried to even recite the Pledge of Allegiance at a Kiwanis meeting, and it became almost impossible because uh. the person who set the pace was drowned out by other people and it just got to be a little bit of a mess. So what we usually do is have one person speak it while the other people are muted and they just speak it to themselves uh, just so there's not that overlap. Okay. And that, that, you know, that takes away some of the camaraderie, but at the same time, it makes it a little less like yeah. you're um, over talking, talking each other. Yes, Linda. I was just going to say, um, we tried to do a, a sing along one time with the memoir group. And it just absolutely did not work. Yeah. So we tried to sing happy birthday to one of our coffee members. <laughs> By the time we got done, she was just just about rolling because they were <laughs> she just she kept hearing everybody come in a little bit differently. Yeah. One per one person My, is done and the other person is still on the first line of the song. Yep. Yeah. I can you just go over how to set up a meeting again, please? Uh, well, I didn't really go through that because that's just something that you have to do when you, uh, when you sign up, sign in to Zoom, uh, there will be an option across the top that says uh, schedule yeah. a meeting. Host a meeting, yeah. Yeah. Host join, it, yeah. You can join a meeting or host a meeting. Well, it's yeah, for, very for, easy. In this case, they're asking about hosting a meeting and setting it up, and they will walk you through each of those steps uh, it's very easy to do. It'll ask you, you know, you can, you can, and, and what's great about it is then too, once you've got that set up, you can easily uh, send out invitations to other people. You get something that comes up, you copy that, and then you can send out emails to multiple people with that text in it. So it's, it's a very easy process. They've really thought of pretty much everything, and I'm sure they've made some changes along the way, but it's very intuitive and it's very easy for even uh, people who have not done it before to to get through it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. How, how long would you recommend setting that meeting up if you're going to host it? How, how long ahead of time do you think? Uh, that, that's a very good question because I know when uh, my breakfast group started doing it, the guy sent it out a week or so in advance. And then the day of, we all clicked on that link and it said, not a valid meeting ID. So somewhere along the way it got lost. But then the other thing that I would say is that if you're like me, if you got an invitation for a meeting, you know, a, a week out, you might lose it on your, in your inbox by that time. You can set it uh, a reminder to your Google calendar, which is always a good thing to do because then it'll pop up when you're close to it as long as you are at your computer at that time. But that's why what we've started to do where we, we set up the meeting well in advance and we'll send reminders out as the meeting approaches. So I do have our meeting set up for June and I'm hopeful that none of them will have that invalid meeting ID come up. My I guess, go ahead. My guess is that uh, Zoom has been doing a whole lot of uh, fix-its as the popularity. I saw somewhere that they're 
uh, downloads went up over 1,200% from like March to April this year. So I'm guessing troubleshooting has become a, a second nature, almost a first nature thing for them now. Hmm. I've had uh, with that Zoom coffee because it's six days out of the week, I've had a couple of times hmm. where I thought I scheduled the meeting, but I didn't. That's one thing I run into is I'd like to schedule the next day's meeting while, you know, right away, but it seems like it doesn't get me out of the that day's meeting so I can do it. And then a couple of times I forgot and I've been able to schedule to host or to schedule a meeting and like within five minutes, everybody's on it. Yep. Yeah, you can basically so, set one up to start immediately to start yeah. right away. And what's nice too, Susan, is that if you've got something that's, that's meeting regularly, like our Kiwanis meeting on Mondays at noon, you can set it up to repeat each week on Mondays at noon, and people can use the same meeting ID number, which means they don't have to keep track of all of those separate emails that are out there. So that makes it really easy. One thing I'm wondering is, because we do a meeting every morning, six mornings out of the week, is there a, I know you can do a recurring meeting, mm -hmm. but can you do it for just six and skip one day, like Sunday, we don't want to have a meeting? Well, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure I would think you'd be able to, but if you set up a meeting that nobody comes to, I don't think there'll be a, there would be a problem with that either. If, if the meeting was set, but you know you're not gonna meet, so everybody just ignores that invitation. Okay, all right. Because the meeting so, only takes place if somebody shows up. <laughs> so if you set up a recurring meeting, does it send out a, an email or do you have to take, does the host have to take care of sending the email out? What I've found with our meetings is that he, we, I still get a, a reminder for that initial meeting, even though he now sets them up individually. So I would say that yes, that uh, reminder goes out on its own in front of each meeting. Okay. Mike, Phil All and right. I have to leave. I just wanted to All let right. you know. All right, thank you, Jeannie, thank for, you. for coming. Bye, Phil. Well, I thought they'd never leave. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't left yet. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's the next rule. Always make sure somebody is logged off before you say something about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you have to be careful because I left a meeting the other day and I could still hear the conversation. Oh, yeah. So, well, until and when I close at the end of our coffee one, it's like I'm, I think I'm the only one that can leave for everybody for the whole meeting because it'll, I'll hit leave. And then it'll come up with a bar that says leave for all. Well, until I hit leave for all, everybody else's messages, or I mean, everybody else's conversation is, go is ongoing. Yep, Every, pe people can leave independently, but when the host leaves the meeting, the meeting is over. Yeah. All right, it looks like Drew had to leave us too. Or he's, no, he's Drew is here. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Drew, <laughs> move. We'll see ya. Bye, Drew. We'll see ya. Uh, but yeah, there, there is oh, the, uh, the Minnesota long goodbye syndrome applies to Zoom <laughs> meetings too. So many times uh, people will linger after the official meeting is over and just say goodbye and chat and do that kind of thing. So that, that's kind of nice too, because sometimes if it is, it's not been ended, for example, I usually see the message in the lower right hand corner that says leave meeting. As mm -hmm. the host, that red button says end. So mm -hmm. I guess when I hit that, everybody's done. Yeah, that's what, on mine, it's a red line that says end for all. And so okay. that means that when I push that, nobody else can. Yep. So I usually before I push that, I'll say, goodbye everybody and I, then I'll push it so they know they're not going to be on there anymore. <laughs> and what's nice for the leaving the meeting is that it is a two button process. So if you hit the first one by mistake, 
and when you want to stick around, you can still, you'll have an option for cancel to come up so you can stay in the meeting. So you don't have to worry about that. But at the same time, if you accidentally leave, you can go back to that original invitation and rejoin a meeting that's already in progress too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they, they really do, you know, if, if like everybody else, you have to at some point go out and use the restroom or something, the first thing they always say is make sure you mute your, your microphone. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> and and then you can you can leave and come back if you want to take uh, you know black out your your uh, camera so that you you avoid all possibilities as well you can do that but one thing they say you should not do if you're on your phone don't take it with you in while you while you're in the meeting into the bathroom <laughs> yeah because you never know what might happen there uh, do do folks have other questions because I've kind of gone through. I think what, what, oh, one thing I didn't mention is along the bottom again, there's something that's called reactions. If you click on that, what you can do, there'll be a couple of icons that come up. The first one shows applause and the second yeah. one is a, is a thumbs up. So you, you can do that. If you click on that, it'll show up in the corner of your screen. So if you want somebody to know that, that you're applauding them without actually applauding, uh, you can you can use that feature. So there are some really really fun things that they've that they've included in here. That uh, and one thing we don't use. I see there's a function for breakout rooms. So if you have a meeting where you want to meet as a group and then break out into committees or something, you can do that and then come back. I have not set that up, so I don't know the process for doing that. But they really have created all kinds of features here that are. Uh, fun and easy to use. Uh, and if you haven't noticed, there's a participants button down there too. So you can see that we right now we've got seven people in our meeting and that's with those who have left already. So it's kind of fun to, uh, to keep track of that stuff as well. Uh, I'm kind of reaching the end of what I had to say. Anybody else have any questions? Mike? Yes, sir. Mike? Hi, Bob. Yeah. What I was wondering, I, I couldn't follow to get that background, uh, the background. Yeah. Uh, um, now we go in that stop video. Yep. Area, and then we click on that up arrow there, right? Correct. Yep. Then it comes up with a choice of uh, integrated webcam. Choose virtual background. That's what I want to click on, right? Exactly. Yep. Okay, if I click on that, then uh, then it brings up my picture, but it. It's got virtual background with a whole bunch of other choices there, which none of them apply, I don't think. But uh, what what do I do next? You would, uh, I think you have to double click on the image and then it would come up as your oh, background. On, on my image, double click with the left, left. Uh, on on the image that you want as your virtual background. But I don't see any Im images there. You don't? You don't see like uh, the uh, Golden Gate Bridge? No, I don't see any of that. Hmm. Uh, I must not have clicked on something here. Now, well, it says uh, choose virtual background and it says none. Okay, I'm not sure why that that, that is uh, set up in every other one that I've found. So you must be extra special, Bob. Mine um, says the same they, they want to they just uh, leave me up as a, uh, the house here, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, Susan, what were you saying? Mine is doing the same thing, and it's telling me I don't, my, somehow it doesn't meet the requirements. Cause okay. I so I, I'm not sure why that is, but I'm having the same thing. Okay. But hmm. I also saw something. I clicked down on participants, and when that came up, down below, it says invite, mute me, and it says raise hand. I'm going to push that, raise hand. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. There you can raise your hand, a little blue box, because yep. we're raising well, hands manually. That, right? means, that means you want to talk. Yeah. You, wanna, you have a yep. question. Yeah, and no one had used that yet in this meeting, and I hadn't well, seen Well, and, and that's because, because I'm, I'm kind of talking about what we'll be using for Vine, and in that case, we want to use the chat feature for asking questions, because otherwise, you would raise your hand that way, and the host would call on you, but we want to use the chat function. When you... When you go into that part where you said that where participants at the bottom, it says invite. I know I had a, did a Bible study with our pastor and there was somebody that one person that wasn't getting on there all right. And so he, 
hit the invite button and he could invite that person into the after we had started the meeting they weren't originally okay. on the participants okay good feature mike mm -hmm. i have Hi. one i have one question too and it could be just uh because of my computer my laptop but when i click on both of the uh carrots next to the mute and the video I only get a, a section, of, a portion of the information, for example, on the microphone um, or on, on that mute button next to the carrot. Mm -hmm. it, does, it gives me choices, select microphone, select speaker, but nothing about the video portion. Uh, you're on the wrong here. You want to go to the one to the right and of the stop video. Okay, so then, oh, so now it says select camera, and the choices there are integrated webcam and same as system. Can you scroll down at all? Oh, uh, and it, maybe it's because of the icons on my screen. I think, I I don't think, what, we're, I think what we're finding is that the different computer capabilities will sometimes limit what you can see on that. Because the other, because yeah. the other option would be to go up there and, and to try to expand the size of that window. But I I'm not having any luck doing that by, I mean, like clicking on one and scrolling through. So my guess is that it's it, it finds what it needs in your computer. And if your computer doesn't have that capability, it will not uh, show that option. I see. Okay, makes that, sense. That that's my guess on that anyway because. Uh, I, yeah. I, I, know, I, I know that for computers and for phones, the options are different on, on many of those things, the, the locations and everything else. So it's probably Jeez. dependent on what your computer is able to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And again, that's a guess on my part, but uh, just from the experience I've had with other people uh, with that same sort of thing. Mike, yeah. I want to mention that I have a friend who refuses to use Zoom because of um, the security issues with it. Okay. Do you have any comments about that? I guess I, I know that at the beginning, Zoom was having all kinds, you know, they were having what they called Zoom bombers who were able to get <laughs> into the connection and sit in on meetings. I know they've had, uh, they've been doing all kinds of troubleshooting on that. They have built in some fail safes for that for example, sometimes if you're going into a meeting, it will ask you for a password or that's where they've added now. When I set up the meeting, you folks, when you log on, there's a waiting room and I have to go and manually let each person into the meeting. That's all features that have come about because of that Zoom bombing. So my guess is that as quickly as they fix one thing, people with nothing else on, to do with their lives finding out other security ways to get in there. I don't know that they've, I haven't heard anything where people have been able to gain access to your computer or any of the information on your computer, but most likely that's always going to be a risk because there are people out there who spend their days trying to figure those things out. So Mike, then, um, the, we do not have to have any password when we're getting into this. We just click on that message that you sent. On the link. Right. Yeah. yeah. There, like I say, Bob, there, there have been different ways that they've done things. At one time, you had to have that password, mm -hmm. but I think they uh, got around that by using the waiting room function for the, for the hosts. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Because Thanks. God knows we don't need another password to remember. <laughs> Although, <laughs> in, in most cases, the password would appear on the invitation, like just below the link for the meeting, so you could go back there and do a, a copy and paste if that came up. Or sometimes what it would do is ask for your account password so that it knew it was you who was trying to access that meeting. Well, it was going through the, uh, when I was getting in here, it was, I was getting on all kinds of different routes there. I don't know why it disappeared from my laptop, that message. Uh, I've had trouble with the TV twice in the last week now, and they put a whole new system in. But they, uh, uh, 
maybe that had something to do with it uh, because I've been goofing around with everything here. <laughs> I've got plenty of time to do it. <laughs> okay. Yep. But you, you never know what. To... Uh, see, that you were talking about that 40 minute expiring time. Uh, we, we ran into that when we had the computer uh, university. Yep. Uh, when Trevor was talking, and then all of a sudden, that was about 40 minutes, and he was gone. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. But, but Colin stayed on there. Yeah. So right. he was able to continue the meeting. I'm not sure, I'm not uh, doubting that maybe Trevor accidentally hit something on his computer, too. It could be, yeah. <laughs> good, thank you. Very good. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any questions? Susan's having an interesting time down there. <laughs> oh, she, all of the all of her virtual backgrounds are covering her face. <laughs> yeah, so She's again, been... it must be must be something with the coloration of of Susan's face that uh, doesn't allow the picture to it kind of stops instead of going behind her. I think it's an improvement. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, anybody else have any questions? Otherwise. Uh, I will uh, 